As a functional and holistic child psychiatrist, I wanted to weigh in on this topic of autism and Tylenol. Obviously, it's become politicized. I just heard another physician argue on a social media post that we know that there's a hundred genes that have been implicated in autism. And he said, because of that, it can't be Tylenol. And I would argue against that because the genes that appear to be at play in autism are genes that affect one's ability to methylate and detoxify and other genes. And just like we're not going to pin it down on one gene, we're not going to pin it down on one insult, one toxin. Most chronic health conditions, including autism, are the result of genetic vulnerabilities aligning with an insult. So you can take a hundred children, hundred infants, and expose them to an insult, a toxic insult or otherwise, and they won't all have the same outcome because of that. And this is because there's a whole spectrum of how well someone detoxifies, how well someone manages what we call oxidative stress, how robust someone's antioxidant system is, and how sort of fragile their DNA is. With this Tylenol argument, Tylenol may be one of many insults at play, and for many individuals it's going to be accumulation of insults, and maybe Tylenol was the tipping point. What is interesting about Tylenol is it actually depletes, in high doses, glutathione, one of the main antioxidants in the body. Well, if someone's already somewhat depleted, either for genetic reasons or because of other insults, then it may be that adding Tylenol, maybe that is what creates the tipping point for an individual. That doesn't mean that it creates the tipping point or is a toxin for all individuals with autism. But as we think about those hundred people, those hundred infants, those hundred children, and exposing them to something, we need to recognize that some of those individuals won't be affected, some will be affected mildly or maybe moderately, and some will be severely affected.